Have you heard the phrase, the rich keep getting richer and the poor are getting poorer? Well, it's not just a phrase. Unfortunately, it's the truth. Despite the fact that millions of people are leaving poverty behind and are even becoming millionaires, some people will never make it. In 2020, America's 614 billionaires net worth exceeded $3 trillion. The stimulus bill that's supposed to help your average folk ended up helping the billionaires the most. At the end of the day, most people spend that money either on their basic needs or purchase some gadgets on Amazon. I guess Bezos was the ultimate beneficiary of the stimulus bill. Even though he has stepped down as the CEO of Amazon, he is still the biggest individual shareholder. But the question that I want to focus on in this video, how do you get out of poverty? What if you're born into a poor family? It's not your fault. What do you do? How exactly do you build wealth and become financially free? We will answer all of these questions and many more. Only if you give this video a thumbs up and just comment. It doesn't matter what you write down there. I just want to see how good this video is going to perform if everyone comments down below. Just comment whatever you want. I promise that I will reply to every single comment down there. And now, let's get back to the video. Number 1. Understand that no one is going to help you except yourself. It's great when there is someone who can help you, either it's the government or your parents, but the reality is no one really cares about you except yourself. Of course, your parents want you to have a better life. However, they don't always have the ability to provide you with that opportunity. And if they have grown up in a poor family, it's very unlikely that they can give you a good financial advice. Otherwise, they would have gotten out of that position long ago. If you talk to people who are struggling financially, they will always blame someone, especially the government who's supposed to take care of them. I'm not saying that the government shouldn't take care of you, but if you rely on outside factors, you will have to wait for a long time. You have to make it crystal clear to yourself that no one can help you as much as you can help yourself. That is the first step to make any meaningful change. Number 2. Don't settle for a low paying job. I'm not against getting a job. In fact, getting a low paying job when you're a teenager is a perfect opportunity to teach yourself the basics of business and money and learn how to be responsible with money. However, a low paying job is a trap that most people get into and never leave. When you grow up poor, every penny matters. Every dollar makes a difference. You grow up with very little needs and wants. Everything you want can be fulfilled with a few thousand dollars. All you want is a proper roof over your head, some good food, and gadgets that everyone else around has. So when you get that first job as a teenager, it provides you with enough income to fulfill those needs. But in return, you have to give up most of your time. So you get to a position where you just work the entire day on a job that doesn't provide you with skills to increase your income year after year, but at the same time fills your basic needs at least, so you get trapped in that job. A low paying job gives you instant gratification, but very little reward in the long run. You can quickly earn enough to be able to take a car on a credit, get the latest iPhone and start going out with friends. But at the same time, it won't give you the luxury of free time to work on yourself and make your time worth far more valuable in the long run. Hence, you have to teach yourself how to delay gratification. The best way to do that is to start going to the gym. No matter who you are, no one is going to see any progress after hitting the gym once or twice or even an entire month. Real progress comes after many many months of hitting the gym at least 3-4 times a week. And if you want to see a substantial difference, then you might need to go to the gym for a few years maybe. That experience will teach you how to work hard for something you will get years later. Number 3. Have a clear plan. If you don't have a plan of how you're going to become financially independent, you will forever be trapped in poverty. It doesn't matter how long that goal is going to take. If you don't have the plan, you won't have the discipline to save and invest. Let me just give you a hypothetical example. Let's say you spend $50,000 a year. If you don't know how you're going to create a passive income of $50,000 a year, then you're wasting your time. But how do you create such a plan? We have discussed that in a previous video, but here is the point in short. 
you have to buy assets that generate income over time. It could be anything from real estate to stocks to bonds or a business that can function with minimum management. A $200,000 house can be rented for $2,000 a month, for example, or $24,000 a year. So, for you to become financially free, you need at least to purchase two properties that will provide you with a rental income of $48,000. That's just one way to do it. There are a million other ways. You can take a mortgage, for example, and let your tenants pay the mortgage and have a small cash flow with every property. Or you can consider the stock market, where you can expect a 10% rate of return in the long run. It doesn't matter what the plan is, as long as it's there and it has a good chance to work. Whether you're going to save 10% of your income to get there or 90%, it depends on you. But here's what most people are going to say. My income barely covers the bills. How am I possibly going to save that much and invest? That's why you need step number four. Focus on educating yourself. If you're making $50,000 a year, it's impossible to imagine yourself making $200,000, for example, or half a million dollars, or a million dollars, because you're comparing that million dollars to your current job. If you're making $20 an hour, then you have to make at least $250 an hour, assuming you will work for 12 hours a day every single day to be able to make seven figures. And as far as it seems, no one is going to pay you that much for such a job. However, that doesn't mean there aren't ways to earn that much. There are people who make far more than that. The only problem is you have to find out how. That's why you have to educate yourself. But if you spend all your time on a low paying job, you won't be able to do that. So what should you do? Either find extra time after you're done with your job or what I did back then is just minimize my expenses, deny myself some of the things so that I could work less to pay the bills and suddenly I had some extra time to work on myself. If you're just starting out, pick up some books, take a look at my book recommendations video, find out what are your strengths are, learn how the latest technologies work and start something in that field. It's not going to happen overnight, but remember, you are in it for the long run. Number five, set up a boring but effective routine. Once you come up with a reasonable plan, it's time to set up a routine. Forget about having adventures every single day. You can't be productive if you don't have a routine. That life you see on Instagram is nonsense. Trust me, everyone who makes real money almost never lives like that. The life of a person who makes a lot of money is super boring. Yes, it is boring, but yet effective. You wake up every day at the same time, do the same things over and over. And over a long period of time, which could be years, you achieve some meaningful progress. Remember the example of the gym? Building a great body is a result of going to the gym every day and repeating the same exercises. Yeah, sometimes you try new equipment, but overall you do pretty much the same things. You train your chest, back, biceps, shoulders at least once a week. After two or three years of hitting the gym three or four times a week at least, you start to see the fruits of your hard work. That's how everything works in life, including wealth. So don't feel miserable when you scroll through your Instagram feed. Just focus on what you're good at. We don't choose how we are born. Some of us are lucky to be born rich while others aren't so fortunate. But as a wise man once said, it's not how you start that's important, but how you finish. If you're born poor, it's not your fault, but if you stay poor for the rest of your life, then it's your choice. Of course, circumstances change from country to country. Being born poor in a first world country like the United States is very different than being born in the middle of Sahara, where you do not have the infrastructure to start building wealth. However, with the rise of the internet, that has changed. You could be anywhere and yet still educate yourself and even build an entire business online. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, then subscribe and turn on your notifications. We're trying our best to make great videos for you and hopefully help you achieve your financial goals. Thanks for watching and until next time.